Focus modes on your iPhone can give you that artificial separation that can put a wedge between different areas of your life. And since the introduction of iOS 16, Apple has made it even easier to set up and to configure different lock screens, watch faces to different focus modes. It's a no-brainer, everyone should be using focus modes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use focus modes to manage my daily life and a tour of all the different apps I use, and then I'll show you how to set it up yourself. Timestamps are below if you wanna jump around the video, but let's get started. Hey guys, my name's Irfan, and I'm all about taking a simplified and gentle approach to productivity. Before I jump into how I use focus modes, let's briefly talk about what focus modes do. And the simplest way to explain it is the feature Do Not Disturb. Most of you already use this feature, but basically when you turn on Do Not Disturb, it mutes notifications. Focus modes is an expansion of that feature. Focus modes takes it a step further by only showing you the apps and app pages that are relevant to that focus mode. So focus modes segments different buckets of your life so you stay on track and you're not distracted by other areas. The natural one that comes to mind is a separation between your work life and your personal life. Now Apple gives you default ones like work, personal, fitness, wind down and sleep, but you can create your own customized focus modes. With that being said, let me show you now how I use focus modes on a regular weekday and how it makes a difference in my life. I start my morning at 7.30 a.m. I look at my watch. It's already turned on to my work focus mode with the suitcase indicator here. This allows me to get in the mindset of getting hard stuff done right away when I wake up. My work focus mode applies both to my full-time job as an organizational psychologist, but also creating content as a YouTuber. So starting with my Apple Watch face here, and what apps I have. So the middle complication here is the Outlook app and this just shows me the next event or next meeting I have for work and I can click into that and go into all of the events or meetings for the day. So that quickly lets me know what's coming up next. And then one of my big goals in the morning is to start a 50 minute deep work session. So I use Apple's timer app and if I click on that, you can see I have it favorited for a 50 minute session. So I can click on that and I'll start a countdown timer for 50 minutes. This is probably the most useful app on the Apple Watch. I know it's a simple app to use, but I think it's so effective and it's so reliable. So with that, I will turn on another app called Timery, which will track my activity. So you'll see that I have work up here, writing or YouTube. And this just allows me to quickly track how many hours of deep work I've accumulated across the week. And then the other two apps on the bottom here, I have the Breathe app. A lot of times when I start a work session, I have a little bit of anxiety, I'm a little concerned, I don't wanna do it, and the Breathe app helps with just taking a couple deep breaths before I get started. And then I just have the music app here if I wanna to listen to me some music while I'm in that deep work session. Moving on to my iPhone for my work focus mode, I have an indicator here that shows me I'm in my work mode here. These icons are specific for this lock screen. So I have the task for today, I have the weather complication here, and I have the watch battery indicator. I sleep with my watch on and just reminds me to charge my watch in the morning if I remember to do that. And then I have my habit tracker and I meditate in the morning. So this just reminds me again that I wanna make sure I get that meditation session in. And opening up my iPhone, very similar theme to my watch where I have Outlook's calendar widget and it just shows me what my day looks like in terms of meetings and events. I can go in there and click on that and I can also look at my email if I wanna do that. This is the Outlook widget app. On the bottom, I have Todoist and I have the today view so I can see what my tasks are for today. Moving on to the second page, which is just a real focus on meditation. My meditation app of choice is Oak these days. It's a completely free app. It has an amazing unguided session. So if you're into unguided meditation, I highly recommend. I use that most mornings. If I don't use Oak, I will use Calm's guided session, and this widget up here lets me quickly start a guided session. And then with those two, I have my habit tracker widget up here that visually shows me what my meditation streak looks like for the month, so I can see how I'm doing, and it just adds a little bit of extra motivation. At the bottom here, I have Todoist. I can add a task here if I want to quickly. And then I have my focus session series shortcut. This is another way for me to get into that deep session. This automatically starts a playlist for me and starts a 50 minute timer on my iPhone. So if I'm not using my watch, I can use my iPhone. And then on the bottom here, I have the Teams app. This is the only communication app that is allowed to bug me in the morning. Obviously I'm at work, so Teams makes sense. All the other 
communication apps are tucked away in the dock here and there's no red badge icon of distraction. So I can't like see what my messages are for WhatsApp or iMessages because I've basically told my iPhone not to distract me with those apps. If I need to get into them, I can get into them right there. And that's it. I don't have any other apps or pages for my work focus mode. It's just these two pages. And the idea is to force myself to be proactive in the morning versus reactive. If I do an important hard task for 50 minutes and get my meditation session in, I've won the morning and my work focus mode helps me achieve that. If I want to be distracted, I have that extra step of searching for the app or turning off my focus mode, which I typically don't do. This is definitely not foolproof, but it just helps me and nudges me towards the right behaviors in the morning. Now from 11.50 to 1 p.m., I take a break and I check in. All my devices automatically change over to my personal mode. And you can see on my watch face here at the top, the suitcase icon is gone and it's replaced by a person icon. The watch face has completely changed as well. I have at the very middle complication, the weather. It's the hourly weather for the day, so I can take a look at that. At that time, I can look at my activity rings, and then I have my Todoist app that I can go into and see the tasks I need to complete today. I have my habit tracker, so the habits that I'm working on for the day, and then I have the iMessages icon here, checking on anything I missed during my work session. Moving on to my personal mode lock screen, you can see it has changed and it's this green color. To me, green indicates my personal life. I have all my calendar events in green, so it makes sense that I visually represent green to show me. I'm in my personal life right now. At the very top, the widgets have changed. I have weather up here. I have my personal calendar. I have the podcast app of choice, which is Pocket Cast, and it shows me my queue. So if I click on that, it'll show me me what podcasts I'm listening to currently and what's next. I am a big fan of listening to podcasts during this break period when I'm eating my first meal. So I'll listen to podcasts and that icon helps me get to them much quicker. On my first home screen for my personal mode, you could see that iMessages and WhatsApp is promptly displayed here. The badge icons are back. Again, if I have any unread messages at this time, I can go and respond to them during this break period. I also have this two widgets here for music and for my podcast player. And I can resume a podcast that I've been listening to or an album. And then I also have this AirPlay to Sonos Siri shortcut, which is great um, when I'm preparing for a meal. If I don't have headphones on, I can just AirPlay whatever I'm listening to right to my Sonos system. At the top, I have my habit tracker widget, and this one specifically is showing all of the different habits I'm trying to accomplish for the day, and it gives me a week view of that, so it lets me know how I'm doing for the week. On the second page here, I have my Mint widget, which just shows me the recent transactions. It's a financial app that just gives you all of the different accounts that you have, but this specific widget just shows you the last transaction. Uh, at the bottom here, I have all these reading apps. So I have the score, which is for me, the app I use to read up about the NFL or the NBA. I have the Kindle app. I try to read books both on my Kindle and on the app on my iPhone, just so I get some good reading time. And then I have Instapaper here, obviously Amazon. I have a couple of folders here for finance, for home apps. I have the Timery app that I mentioned before. Uh, I can track how much time I'm spending on different activities, especially those deep work sessions that I think are so important. And then weather here, meetup app, and then some additional Siri shortcuts. And finally, the third page for my personal mode, I have a widget here for Notion, shows me my favorite notes. I have Todoist, I have the Drafts app. I will talk more about this when I talk about my wind down mode, but I utilize that to capture thoughts uh, as I'm trying to sleep. I have the Apple Notes app, I have the Health app, and then I try to put all the setting apps together. So the iPhone settings, the watch settings, and then Siri shortcuts. And then I have a couple dating apps here, another podcast app that I utilize in this app called Otter that allows you to quickly speak and it transcribes your words. It works really well. And then this widget here is for sleep. And those are the three pages I have for my personal mode. So this is my wind down focus mode. You can see the indicator here is the sun setting. And my watch face here is this nice analog watch face. All the complications here are related to sleep 
So I just have the timer app here. I have Apple's sleep app. I have the Calm app, so I can go in here, start a breathing session. I can go and start a meditation. And this last app is the Drafts app. I think it's my favorite app when I'm in bed and I have a idea or a thought that I want to get out. And I don't want to grab my phone or get a piece of paper. And this lets you dictate on your watch. So you could dictate any thought and the dictation works really well and I'll capture it as a note. So I love this app, it works really well at night. Highly recommend, it's totally free if you have an Apple Watch. So this is what my phone looks like when I'm in wind down mode. Again, I have the Outlook widget here and the cool thing with the widget is it automatically moves to the next day later at night. So obviously I'm doing this on Saturday. On a Monday night, it will show me my events for Tuesday so I can get ready for what's coming up. On the bottom here, I have the Todoist app. Um, if there's anything I didn't get done, I can go in there and move them to the next day or a different date. On the next page, I have the big weather widget and it just shows me the weather for the next couple hours and for the rest of the week. And then I have those meditation apps that I've talked about before. I have a lot of sleep anxiety and these meditation apps can sometimes help me. And that's it, very similar to the work mode. I don't wanna be distracted by any other apps. Okay, now let me show you how to set up focus modes on your iPhone and some tips and guidelines to keep it easy and simple. So my first piece of advice is to start with just one focus mode and that should be work. So if you're a working professional or if you're a student, get all those distracting, time-sucking apps off and stick with only the apps that support that focus mindset. Now, the best thing to do is not to have your phone on you at all when you're working, but that's obviously pretty difficult. The next best thing is to have your work focus mode on automatically. And to be honest, if I was gonna use the 80-20 principle, I would just stick to the work focus mode because that's really the one that makes the biggest difference. So best bang for your buck, Start with the work focus mode and forget about the rest. The second thing to remember is when you turn on a focus mode, there are two constants, which is that the home page zero, whatever you want to call this, the, the most left page here is always going to stay the same and your dock is always going to stay the same regardless of what mode you put it on. So I'm at work mode right now. If I go to personal, nothing changes with my dock and nothing changes on this left screen here. Everything else will change. So keep that in mind and what apps you decide to put in your dock and on this page. My piece of advice here is to keep these dock apps, the ones that you wanna use all the time, make them make sure that they're utility apps like a notes app, calendar app, maybe Safari, um, and then messaging apps. I like to tuck these away, as I mentioned. And then even for this left page here, I just have music, photos, Google Maps, weather. These are all basically tools. They wouldn't suck me in into anything specific like social media, or a reading app, I try to keep these apps basically utilities that I use all the time and I always need to refer to them regardless of what focus mode I'm in. So we'll get started by clicking on the settings app and then we'll click on focus. And these are all the, all the different focus modes you have. We'll go into work and we'll customize it by clicking on the edit button. And then we can change the name. We can also change the icon and the color. As I mentioned, I like having brown as the color for my work focus mode and green for my personal mode, but you can change it to whatever color you like. And then allow notifications. This is probably something you've seen before with do not disturb, but you can have certain people still get through during that focus mode. So these are the people that can contact you and call you. And then you can also allow favorites to do the same thing. Down here is a lot of repeated calls. Anyone who tries to call you a few times will get through. So I keep that on. And under apps, I have this set to allow notifications from. This allows only these apps to notify me when I'm in my work focus mode. At the bottom here, time sensitive notifications are turned on. Any apps that aren't on this list, but they wanna send me a time sensitive notification can push it through and I can see it. Think of this as a Lyft or an Uber. And then we have another uh, button here for options and these are notification options. So show on lock screen is turned off. I don't want those silent notifications to still come through on the lock screen. I don't wanna accidentally see them and click on any of them. So I have that turned off. Dim lock screen is turned off. Since we are gonna have a lock screen customized to this focus mode, we don't need to have this turned on. And then finally, hide notification badges. I have this turned on. I don't want those red badges of distraction showing up while I'm in my work focus mode, especially the ones that are message related. I don't wanna see those when I'm in that mode. So customize screens, this is a new feature in iOS 16. This is where you can customize the lock screen, which is a brand new feature in iOS 16. 
You can customize the pages, which is uh, a, an old feature, and then you can customize the watch faces, which was something you could do through Siri shortcuts, but now you could do it right in the focus settings. So we'll click on the locks setting, and you can see I have the coffee lock screen selected for this work focus mode that I've shown you already. Under the pages, I have these two pages selected for my work focus mode, but you can pick whatever ones you want. And I'll talk more about how to rearrange these when you're in that focus mode in just a second. And then finally, you have your watch face. Pick a watch face that will accompany that focus mode. And then here is where you'll schedule your focus mode. I have the set from 7 to 11.50 and then again from 1 to 3.30 p.m. You can click on the add schedule and you have other options as well. You could base it on time, which is what I recommend. I think it's the simplest and easiest to implement, but you could also do it based on location or apps that you trigger. So think about those, but honestly, keep it simple and just schedule something daily for your work focus mode. And the final thing in the focus mode settings is focus filters, but you don't need to really worry about this. This just has it where different apps can behave differently depending on the focus mode you're in, but it's not something that's really supported. The only thing you may want to do is for appearance, you could change your focus mode from dark to light, depending on if you like it that way for that focus mode. And the final thing you wanna do is you wanna get out of the settings, hold down the home button, every, everything's gonna start jiggling. And what you wanna do is you wanna click on the pages here, and this will allow you to rearrange the order of the different pages. So, and this will be specific for this focus mode. So you can move these around and pick which ones you want to be first, second, third, fourth. And that's all you need to get started with focus modes. I think starting with work is the simplest and setting a schedule. Try that, see if it works for you, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you wanna see my favorite Siri shortcuts, the video is right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.